To Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best-selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Rebelpreneur Radio, the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. So. A big part of your success in life and in business has to do with your ability to pay attention to what is right in front of you and develop laser beam focus. And my guest today is going to help you do that in a big way. Her name is Harriet Stein. She is a registered nurse and a mindfulness-based stress reduction qualified instructor. For the past decade, Harriet has provided highly interactive mindfulness programs at Fortune 500 companies to over 5,000 employees and presented at internal leadership summits for global audiences. Harriet wants you to consider putting your big toe in the water right now to learn how, by just paying attention, you can easily increase your productivity and decrease your stress. So, Harriet Stein, welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. Oh, thank you so much, Ralph. I really appreciate you allowing me to share my passion with you today. Well, it's really exciting to have you on the show. Tell us more about this concept of sticking your, your big toe into the water. What does that mean? <laughs> well, you know, I named my company Big Toe in the Water as an homage to my teacher. And I'm sure many of your listeners can appreciate that desire to you know, to want to do something different or more with their life. And I actually approached John kabat who's attributed with bringing mindfulness to the Western Hemisphere, after a conference session for some advice. And, you know, to be honest, I was just looking for a lead, a, a lead you know, um, some colleague of his that he could recommend since I was really passionate and I shared my professional experience with him and he listened intently. And then I quickly tried to boil down like decades of life and professional experience into five minutes. And then he just simply replied, why not just put your big toe in the water? Mm. And he smiled and said, just take one little step, try one little thing. You know, you don't have to quit your job or move. Mm. And, you know, I smiled and I thanked him and I walked away and I was still hoping for that lead. But looking back at that moment, I realized, you know, he gave me so much more because he gave me this honest answer about how to create the life I wanted to live. You know, and that's what I started doing very slowly over the next several months. So I'm living proof that if you have a dream or are confused or frustrated with where you want to go in your life at this moment, you know, you just have to put your big toe in the water. And then just carefully pay attention so as to not miss these endless ripples. Hmm. I love that analogy, uh, especially with entrepreneurs. We tend to be big picture people. Uh, we also tend mm-hmm. to overthink and overcomplicate things. And so part of, of this idea I, of, of the big toe in the water is what's the next step? Let's just focus on getting the next step done. And then mm-hmm. we go from there. The The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And in, in, in your case, Harriet, it begins with just one one little part of your foot, your big toe. Just stick your toe in the water and get going, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, I heard you recently say, Ralph, that people frequently deal with the leaves of the trees instead of taking the axe to the root. Mm. And so I want to assure you what I really want to do today is get at the root of the tree because I want to explain to people why it's important to pay attention. And, you know, a few months ago, the Harvard Business Review posted this article called In a Distracted World, Solitude is a Competitive Advantage. And, you know, in the article, it said that, you know, you have to have this discipline to step back from the noise of the world, that it's essential to staying focused. And I teach people like how and why they would want to take that step back, hmm. you know, and you're, you're a strategic thinker and you know, it's important to have to define your own strategy. And I really want people to learn to just be able to pause and notice 
you know, those thoughts going through their head since one needs to be able to clearly focus in order to create those strategies. That's really so important. And and I, I really love that quote that this is a competitive advantage in a world where people are busy, 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 jumping from one thing to the next, multitasking, uh, doing things halfway, uh, doing a lot of things halfway well instead of one thing very well. Um, and in, mm-hmm. in my world, in the media communication, the attention span is just getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Um, so what you do, I think, is very valuable, and I think it will have very uh, some, some very strategic implication for our listeners. But before we jump into it, tell us more about uh, who you help and what is it that you do? What is a mindfulness-based stress reduction instructor? Yeah. Well, what I do is I work with all size companies since a mindful business, like you just said, is a healthy, more collaborative, engaged workplace. And any company who understands this has the competitive advantage. Um, I'm reading this book right now called The New ROI, uh, Return on Individuals. So it's the human capital asset that is the most valuable asset in every organization. So what I do is I work with employees to teach them this practice of mindfulness, which is this moment-by-moment awareness without judgment. It's a practice of compassion so that they can learn how to notice if they're frequently thinking about a situation in the past that they could never change. You know, why did I send that email? Why didn't I go to this event or, you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda type of thought. Or if they're always worrying about this future that has yet to unfold, this constant planning, when in reality, the only moment that actually exists is this one right now. So I focus on listening to my clients to determine their needs. And then I try to provide actionable programs for organizations, you know, both for profit and not profit, that teach people how to improve their health and productivity through mindfulness. Well, that that is so important, and I love that ROI return on what'd you say individual? Yeah, this is a new book I'm reading. It's actually called ROI Return on Individual. Yeah. Wow, what what, what a paradigm shift! Mm-hmm. I, I heard people joke mm-hmm. uh, in the past. Business people would joke that um, their people are not their assets; that they are the liabilities. And so I think <laughs> that mindset is is uh, <laughs> it's kind of a negative mindset. And but I think uh, human the human resource and the human capital. I think that's very important, especially in the digital world that we live in. People still want that personal connection. They still want to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. So you're you're helping people to become more mindful, helping them to, to become more human. And part of that is to be in the moment. But tell me, how did you get started doing this? What got you on the path of thinking about this and, and making a, a career out of it? Yeah, well, you know, I was working at this Fortune 500 company for about 10 years, and I noticed that one of my, that my colleagues were just getting sicker and heavier and more stressed out every day. One day I was sitting in my office, and a coworker told me a colleague was lying on their floor of their office in the dark. And I began my career, you know, decades ago as a nurse, so I would always get these types of calls. And I, I went running, and she had a migraine. And, you know, I realized right there and then I had to start doing something. And I began offering a 30-minute mindfulness class over lunch. In the first week, two people showed up in the conference room. And then the next week, there weren't enough chairs in the room. <laughs> and I ended up continuing that class every week for nine years. Wow. So what happened? Yeah, so I realized after years of teaching during lunch and departmental meetings and you know, I even started taking vacation to teach at other companies that I formed my own company almost seven years ago and then eventually decided to really take this seriously and make my side hustle, which is my true passion, you know, my full time career. That is that is really neat. And you've been at this for several years now. You are working with people in, in high levels, uh, Fortune 500 companies. Mm-hmm. You've presented at leadership summits, you've worked with over 5,000 employees. I mean, you, you've been at this for a number of years. What would you say is mm-hmm. the most common problem you see when you're helping the, the people that you're helping? 
Well, you know what? The big problem is judgment. And, you know, I'll give you my favorite example, which is driving. So what happens is, and then I will relate it to the work world in which we live every day, because driving, when you're driving along and someone cuts you off, the tendency for many people is then to become very aggressive themselves. And then, you know, they speed up and they want to see if the person is male or female or young or old. And, <laughs> they always look, you know, don't they? <laughs> I live here in Pennsylvania. <laughs> they, always, they always look, you know. And I live here in Pennsylvania. We actually check out their license plate to see what state they're from. <laughs> so, <laughs> so instead of reacting, it's much better to just pause in that moment when they cut you off and notice the story you're making up. You know, how is this experience is making me feel at the moment? You know, what does it feel like to be in my body? And I believe like anger is the most dangerous emotion that we can have. And it, it's like that old saying that it's like when you get angry, it's like holding a hot coal with the intent of throwing it. You know, who is really getting burned? Yeah. <laughs> so whether, you know, whether it's a car or someone not returning your phone call or email or not making eye contact with you when you pass them in the hallway at work or even during a meeting, I really suggest to people to try not to judge and to just think to yourself that maybe, just maybe they were up all night with a sick child or worried about an ill parent, or maybe the driver of that car was rushing to the hospital to see an injured friend, or maybe they just had to go to the bathroom. I mean, everyone's <laughs> dealing with something, you know, and this practice is a practice based in compassion. So, you know, I really would like people to try to start giving others this benefit of the doubt. Mm. Now, it, I, the, the first thing that I think of when you say that is, but Harriet, Aren't there just some self-absorbed people in the world, some very rude people, really jerky people, people who don't know how to drive? Um, it, why, why not just acknowledge that and why go the extra mile to not judge other people? Um, because it's never about them. It's always about us. Mm. It's that, it goes back to that hot pole. When people are being, you know, jerky or obnoxious or it's noticing in that moment when somebody does or say, says something, what does it feel like in our body? You know, to just pause in that moment because then we have the opportunity to either respond or react. And, you know, when somebody says or does something that is hurtful, um, if we don't pause, a lot of times we quickly react. You know, and then later on, we're like, oh, God, if I if I hadn't sent that email or if I hadn't said that or if I hadn't done this and it's too late. So, you know, there's always going to be those people out there. There are wonderful um, opportunities for us to practice every <laughs> single day. Um, <laughs> all we have to do is go on Twitter or any of your your, you know, your um, whatever your flavor social media is your favorite. Um, and you'll see that there are some people that get very reactive and then there are other people that are just, you know, they just respond mm. and that feels totally different in your body. Um, you know, the word disease, I always say, if you break that word into two syllables, it's dis-ease. Mm. Mindfulness promotes ease. And that's why I've, you know, that's my whole passion in life is teaching this is because I want people to be less stressed out. Mm. You know, it's not that hard to do. So so it sounds like listening to you, Harriet, that a lot of our stress is coming from the the judgments that we make about other people and the stories that we tell ourselves. We're we're stressing our own mm -hmm. selves out by our reactions to things. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Absolutely exactly. Um one of the pillars of mindfulness is called beginner's mind. And Jeff Bezos actually tells his employees it's always day one. Um, even one of the buildings on Amazon's campus is called day one. And, you know, with beginner's mind, every moment is a new, fresh moment. And this is great insight for entrepreneurs, big and small, to remember. Because, you know, say they need to network to get new clients. You know, what is the story you're telling yourself in the, in your head? If the story begins... Well, last time I called them, this happened, or last time I emailed, or what if they don't, or, you know, what if this happens? When you notice that story, you know, and then trying to have some compassion for yourself, you can say, oh, you know what? The past is over. I can't change it, you know, and, 
you know, I don't even know when I contact this person what's going to happen. So to just stay in this moment, this is the only one that actually exists. And to just constantly bring yourself back and to notice that, um, you know, I heard you mention on one of your recent shows that your favorite movie was It's a Wonderful Life. Mm. And I believe that movie is beloved by millions of people because we never think, how could little old me ever make a difference? You know, <laughs> what would it matter if I didn't exist? Right. Mm -hmm. And yet this message, you know, it brings it home so clearly that every person matters and that the ripples of our actions are endless from the effect that we have on other people. So when you pay attention, when you're driving and ignore the beat from your phone or the person who just did something unsafe or mean or, you know, um, cut you off, you're not only saving your own life, but you're saving the lives of all the other people driving around you. Wow. That, that is so that's so incredible to think about the ripple effect that you have. And that can work in a positive way or it can work in a negative way. So it can create negative uh, ripples or positive ripples, and it affects more than just us. It affects everyone around us. This is really uh, critical, I think, to decreasing stress, and that gives us more room to be productive in, in the things that we're trying to accomplish and to be happily productive. Um, so someone listening right now probably resonates with this. What can they do and what can we do to begin to see some immediate improvement in this area of paying attention and being mindful of our responses and reactions to things? Mm -hmm. Well, I would really invite your listeners to actually give themselves the space every morning, even if it's only five minutes in the bathroom. And if they don't have the space in the bathroom at home, do it at work or at Starbucks or whatever um, to just sit quietly, you know, and to rest. This concept of non-doing. You know, a musician would never go out on stage without first tuning their own instrument. And yet we would all benefit from tuning our own instrument before we go out, you know, and face the world. Mm. I love that. I love that analogy. Is that is that something that you practice? What do you do to, to stay in that place of not yeah. doing? Yes, very much so. so. So I try to begin every morning um, by just you know, sitting and, you know, it doesn't take long and to just be able, you know, you can just follow your breath. You notice, you know, they, we always say that, you know, we treat our thoughts as if they were clouds in the sky. You notice if your, you know, mind is wandering and just like a cloud in the sky, you notice, oh, my mind has wandered to something from the past or the future. And then you, you just let it keep going. You let those thoughts just keep moving just as if they were clouds. And then you just bring your attention right back to what it feels like to be sitting. Hmm. Excellent. Now, when I, when I get to this part of the interview, I always ask, how can working with someone like you actually help someone's chances of success? Because the, the biggest problem with self-help is that you have to help yourself. And if you're able to help yourself and figure all of this out, uh, you wouldn't be in the position that, that you're in. You wouldn't be experiencing the, the problems that you are experiencing. So it's, it's useful for people to rely on others who have gotten results in certain areas. How would working with a professional like you who deals with this on a daily basis, how would that really improve their chances for success? Mm -hmm. Well, I know you and your listeners can appreciate the sense of needing to go higher, faster, stronger. And it's exactly why this practice is now taught at Fortune 500 companies, top business schools, major sports teams. I mean, Phil Jackson highlights it in his book, 11 Rings. So I think by working with me, they're going to learn the practice that is going to very quickly, they're going to be able to see very positive effects in all different parts of their life. Mm. Excellent. Um, well, tell us um, if, if you've got a great website. I'm going to share that with our listeners here in just a minute. But um, tell us about uh, what's got you really excited. What are you working on right now that you'd like to share with us? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I would like to mention a really short book that has dramatically changed my life over the last several months. And it's called The Go-Giver. Um, it's not called The Go-Getter. It's called The Go-Giver. The Go-Giver. I, I am familiar with that little book. Yeah. I, I was going to 
sent it to you as a gift after the show, Ralph. You just you just ruined my gift I was going to give you. Well, um, it, it's so good. I, so. I I couldn't I couldn't keep it to myself. It's like yes, that's an excellent book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it you know the whole thing of it, it's it's this great little teeny tiny. It's like a little parable, and you could probably read it in an hour. And I just I love that book. I think that it's just so fantastic because it talks about you know how one of the key in, in you know for us to be successful, our influence is determined by how abundantly we place other people's interests first. Mm. So it's really in that spirit. What has me excited is I'm looking forward to all the new people that I don't even know yet that I'm going to be meeting and working with this year. That's cool. Yeah. Very neat. Uh, so as our listeners are, are, are listening to, to this, I think it's probably igniting something in them uh, like an aha moment. Oh, okay. I need to really learn how to be more mindful in 2018 so I can be more productive and, and mostly so that I can reduce my stress. So how can our listeners get in touch with you, Harriet? Yeah, it's easy to get a hold of me. Um, I invite them to begin a conversation with me on Twitter. Not surprisingly, I'm at Pause and Notice. Um, or they can visit my website, Big Toe in the Water. Excellent. So that's BigToeInTheWater.com? It is. Yep. Perfect. So uh, this has been really good and and very challenging as well to, uh, to consider this uh, mindfulness and, and focusing our mm -hmm. attention on things in a positive way. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom that you'd like to share with our listeners as we close? Um, well, I have two quick ones. One is Steve Harvey has this great YouTube video called Sometimes You Have to Jump. And to me, he's talking about following your heart and using those special talents that we have to really, you know, figure out what it is that you love to do and what you're meant to be doing. And I believe by following your intuition, it's just critical. And that most important voice we need to be able to hear is our own, which I believe you'll only be able to hear if you pause and embrace the silence. And, you know, every week for decades, I've watched this program called Sunday Morning on CBS. And some brilliant person realized years ago to just have them show nature for just a few minutes at the end of the show every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so I heard Gary Marshall, who created so many iconic sitcoms, I heard him once say during this interview that he thought he was the only one in the world sitting and quietly and peacefully watching this segment. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, I feel exactly the same way. And yet that show has over 6 million viewers. So for those few minutes, 6 million people are quietly sitting and watching like water flowing in a stream or a bear moving slowly through the woods. And I know that everyone collectively is having their blood pressure decrease and are relaxing and appreciating the simple joy of experiencing nature. So I'd highly recommend getting out into nature and just noticing it with all your senses, even if it's only five minutes, or consider watching just the last few minutes of that segment on <laughs> Sunday morning. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that you bring that up because I, I can't remember many of the of the stories or the news items on that program, but I definitely remember the last two or three minutes of nature scenes and, and just quiet that they that they broadcast at the end there. Uh, so that that's really it, cool. It's perfect. It's, yeah, because you're you're so 100 percent paying attention in those few minutes. And doesn't it always seem like it's a little bit longer than it actually is? Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, that's that's good practical wisdom and, and good advice for us to uh, put into place in our life in and in our business. I've been speaking with Harriet Stein. She is a registered nurse and a mindfulness based stress reduction qualified instructor. You can find out more about Harriet at Big Toe in the Water dot com. Uh, Harriet Stein, thank you so much for being on Rebelpreneur Radio today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Ralph, for allowing me to share my passion today with you and your listeners. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at ralphbrogdon.com.